Good afternoon. My name is Norman Fong, and I'm with Norman's Orchid. And this is one of the <clears throat> episodes. I do apologize that I, <clears throat> my voice was kind of on and off. We're still recovering from the flu. Uh, can you all hear me? I'm kind of having the smoky <laughs> voice today. Uh, <clears throat> today's topic is uh, repotting and dividing path field pattern, uh, whether it's Maori type or <clears throat> the complex type. Okay, uh, how many of you have done the dividing path field pattern before? Okay, uh, <clears throat> the spring and fall is actually the two best season to repart or dividing path field pattern. Uh, in theory, if you have a greenhouse, for example, uh, you can repot path field pattern all four seasons. Or if you have uh, going okay on the light, uh, <clears throat> that you do have a control light, uh, 12 hour length. Right now, it is the perfect season for repotting path. And because you should have a very long minimum naturally 12 hour 12 hour day length and then sun, I think Sunny is touch Sunny is trying to call me <laughs> uh, and then the night temperature is still naturally still uh, warm and so uh, one thing you do not want to divide or repart in pathopedium or actually any orchid is during the uh, winter month when it has short day and long night, and the temperature in your growing area is below 55, okay, whether it's outdoor uh, or in a greenhouse or in the house, that is the temperature. It, the plant orchid physiology, the plant physiology is going to tell them that they're, they're going to see my kind of dormant because short day, long night, okay. So that's for the, the, the plant trigger their next growing stage to be slowing down because the, the, the day length uh, and temperature tell the plant to go into slow growth moment. Okay, so this is why if you're doing a repotting or dividing, you're actually going to counter effect. Uh, they're not going to do anything for any rooting until you have longer day and warmer night temperature about 60 degree Fahrenheit. Are we all, all straight now? Okay, so. <clears throat> But that doesn't mean that you have to go change repotting on every orchid, every pathopedium in your collection. So I'm, what I'm going to do is to show you uh, what to do and not to do on the pathopedium. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you some of the smaller ones. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, pathopedium, Michael Cooper wood. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to show you, not for beginner, but yes, this is to show you, yes, you can grow papyrpidium even in a moss. Look at the root here. Okay, I'm going to show you the root <coughs> structure. <coughs> Sorry for the, for the uh, uh, voice. The, Pathopedium have a very root structure, very different than Catalia or Phenolopsis. It's a root hair. You see here? Okay. Do you never want to let the root hair dry out? Okay. And so this is since, and this is another reason. I don't care how cheap they are or how inexpensive or how rare. Never buy Pathopedium, whether it's Maori or Comprac as a bare root season, especially from overseas, because lots of time they on overseas. Uh, if you're not confident, it's better to not to do it because when they ship Pathopedium or even Fragmentpedium from overseas to save the shipping charge and also to avoid the uh, problem in the USDA in, in, in inspection. So they actually will trim a lot of root off. Almost not much there anymore. 
So it's very, very hard to recover a rootless pathopedia. A lot more challenge than your pathopedia of catarrhea or phenanopsis. So the reason being, and even if you have another root there, why is the pathopedia root hair here? This is the main one here. Why is the root hair dry out? It's almost a dead sentence for path because it's, once the root hair dry out, they cannot, they count on the root hair here to absorb, to take up the nutrient and moisture. So <clears throat> if you live in a very dry area like Arizona, and you do have a very good water quality, okay, the number one key is good water quality. Yes, you can go in, in the moss, because otherwise they, they're going to, and this is perfectly okay. So there's always an exception, but it's not for beginner, okay. But, <clears throat> but this is a uh, Rothschild-Tarian hybrid, and I found the Michael Cooper wood, for me anyway, because uh, especially when you have experience over uh, a record heat last week, uh, we do see a lot of some heat stress on some of the smaller plants, and I will show you later, on the Pathopedium, because when you come to Pathopedium, whether it's Maldia type or complex type, remember, if you feel the foliage, they are actually really thinner, much thinner than your Catalia or Phalaenopsis, right? So there is a very, very limited area for the leaves to store water. So if you are in delta, water them anyway because you don't want you do not want to have a root hair to dry out once the root hair to dry out it's very very uh, hard to stimulate new root system to come out or the root tip to come out okay so it's better to over water when it comes to pathopedium versus other orchid then if you're going to be on vacation for example and you are afraid the pollen media can dry out simply put in the saucer Fill it up with water, and you'll be okay for a couple of weeks. Don't worry. Being submerged in water for a couple of weeks is not going to kill them, with the exception of if they are in the moss. A well water moss will be good for good two, three weeks, okay, especially in the winter time coming up. <clears throat> okay, this is the best thing about the Maldi and Pathopedium is always start out with a good pollen mix and I use my own the fine pollen mix <coughs> and this is pretty much is the very of uh, we use the very best fine small uh, Douglas fir bark from Oregon okay you can basically buy the fine mix <coughs> and then you can build from there and for pathopedium I personally add more of these uh, pumice, and this is the pumice from uh, <coughs> Turkey. Which one? Turkey. Turkey. Yes. And I keep saying that I want to, uh, we want to sell this. This is the best pumice for pathopedia. And I also add amended the bamboo charcoal in here. And bamboo charcoal is great for pathopedia because <coughs> pathopedia, the bamboo charcoal is the is almost, uh, it's been fired up at 1200 Fahrenheit. So it's almost uh, uh, re uh, activated charcoal. And bamboo is a much better than any of the wood charcoal because you never know what kind of wood they, they, they source from. Or uh, God forbid, uh, there are some very bad in, in this incident that uh, some of the charcoal, maybe 12, 15 years ago, has been is from the wood that has been sprayed with herbicide for deforest and so what happened is that kind of charcoal is going to kill everything you have because when the root going down it has the uh, herbicide on that so be always very careful where you buy your charcoal if you never buy the charcoal where you buy it from uh, always try a small sample first okay and um, Okay, so this is, and this is what I prepared the day before. It's pre-wet, 
you always want to pre uh, measure your, your part media, whether it's uh, on a path or path repeating, all my carrot, all my orchid. I drench them with five cent solution overnight. Okay, just a five cent uh, right here. Okay, the only exception is uh, instead of one teaspoon per gallon of water on the orchid that we use it once a month, I use a tablespoon because we are working with inorganic material here. Tablespoon is what I recommend it also, but I always use a small teaspoon for the orchid. So I drench the, you can actually even soak it overnight in the uh, one tablespoon per gallon of water overnight. And the next morning you drench them. The, oh, I, that way, <coughs> this is what I call the pre-moist, pre-moist mix. Okay, so we, on the path of pedium, I thought it would be better is to show you case by case, whether we need to repot it or not. Okay. Let's do this one. <clears throat> they just dunk the flower in the spring. We cut them off. But this is one here by inspection, visual inspection, you, you don't have to take it out. The party media is still okay. Okay. They do have a little bit yellow senescence, not not big deal because of the weather changing. So I'm not going to repot on um, this one because I'm waiting for the. Remember what we talked about in the on um, the Catalia? Uh, any of this symposium type, the one with the rhizome running, you know, not phenanopsis. Phenanopsis is monocot. I'm waiting for the new shoot to come out to repot it. So this one, we just do a visual inspection. Okay, uh, take out the old leaves and it'll be okay. And this one here, another example, I'll cut, I'll cut off the old leaf, old spike, and this. And, and this is the tox situation. Depend on the hybrid. Okay, this is a fantastic crystal reed, which is a miniature uh, vinicolor. So it's not the, the big standard type. This is the key, and they do have a nice shoe coin coming up, but a little bit too far. Okay, you don't want to have a shoe to two for four, uh, about two to three inches. This is a perfect case. I will leave it alone because another leaf coming up, they are ready to flower. They are ready to set the flower for the fall. A uh, lot of Pathopedium, especially the modern hybrid, and this is a Vinny. Uh, oh, yes, fantastic crystal ray. It's a <coughs> American Beauty hybrid onto a, a miniature species, so they can flower twice a year. So they done the spring, and now the fall is coming. So I do not want to repot them, and the pollen media is good, and they still have plenty of space. Uh, it's, I would leave, this is the case, do not repot them. Okay. All right. <coughs> Here's another one. This is the um, Myaloponensis by Delta Nadia. Okay, so this is the, uh, I'm sorry, this is the Ho Chi Minh, Vinanensis by Delta Nadia, another warm grower. So all you have to do is just cut out the spikes. So this is, the fall is a good season to start looking at all your path. All right, so I'm not gonna repot them. Here's another case. Very nice. All you have to do is just pinch out the leaf. And there's an older leaf here, depending on what you what <clears throat> what you are. Uh, if you for me, there's you look at it under the leaf, there's no insect underneath. So I personally I usually let it dry off naturally versus trying to pour it or cut it. That will create a cut surface. So you actually open up for a possibility of infection. So by the time they didn't dry off naturally they will detach themselves, so the plant itself will have a dry seal, all right? Okay, so this is the perfect example of, this is the miniature and a species. 
is a palpipedium foliae. Yeah, foliae album. Okay, so this is a case of the heat stress that we experienced for over 100 degrees for over 10 days. And the greenhouse, even we try to cool the greenhouse, the greenhouse actually went as high as 92 degrees in there. So some of the species, what happened with the, remember now, the smaller the pot, the faster they dry out. So a lot of times with the nursery that our size, we may not water it enough or have a manpower to catch it. Because when you have a, a greenhouse outdoor outside is over 100 and humidity is 0%, in, for the plant this size, I think you had to water three times a week. Okay, so this is the case of you have to do some kind of treatment. <clears throat> and the reason, and this is actually not a, a disease. This is actually also the, when the plant are dry, okay, if you have any of the salt from fertilizer, from your water, they're going to become more, um, the milk will be more uh, uh, fertilized, what I call fertilized burn, because the EC, electronic the conductivity will be higher. This is why we always say, if you're in doubt, water them, okay? The, so this, for you, we, we try, the first thing we know, the weather forecast is coming out a little bit of heat. The first thing we do is water everything, but because the, the fan is actually running from 8 a.m. to about 8 p.m. So there's so much air movement, so they actually dry out too fast. And there are some species that participate in foliar, which is a, a miniature alba. This type of orchid are more sensitive to the, the root. So this is the perfect case that we actually do, should be repotted. And <clears throat> And I can bet you, Jeff can show this. This is actually see some kind of salt deposit already. You see here? The whitest here is actually from salt or water. And they are very, so this actually, some orchid species are very sensitive on there. So the best way is to take it out. Okay, let's, let's see the root system. Jeff, if you can focus on this. Versus the, the, the very healthy root earlier, you notice that look here, instead of nice and vibrant white, they actually turn dark, okay? So they are borderline trouble. So it's a good thing that we actually get it out of this, the old mix that probably have a lot of salt in there. Okay, so then I always have a, a, a solution here. This is actually Fison. A, tea, a, a teaspoon per gallon of water. So what then you do is uh, disinfect in the five cent solution because you do not want to bring in any old uh, problem. And it, you also wash up a lot of this old possible bacteria or fungi around the root area. Okay, then the next step is to physically remove some of the damage area. So you, after you clean your, okay. I wanna cut off any of this burn area. And I'm gonna do another extra step for you. <clears throat> I'm gonna help them a lot, okay. If you have my, uh, this is why you always have the two in one cakey paste, okay. This cakey paste is a, do a lot more than just two cakey. It had the uh, grow regular. So I'm gonna cut, put a cakey paste at the base. The base, or especially this new, new shoe here, okay, this will help them, we have, we have a new 
basil with a new shoot coming up. And I also have a, this is a solution of Mega Thrive. You can also use it as a spray or I simply just, because I do this, you know, you do, if you can do it more than once uh, for, this is Mega, Mega Thrive solution, you use fresh, okay? After you seal them with two in one, uh, that's okay. Then I will just li rinse it up the entire plant with a root. Okay. Then what size of pot should we use in here? Two inch, three inch, or five inch? <laughs> The, the pot size is actually relationship to how much root you have. So the best size is actually back to the smaller two inch pot. So this is what sometimes if you have from the shipping from our uh, mail order, you have some uh, plastic uh, styrofoam peanut if you put one or two under the fully under here for health drainage. Oh, so I usually put the uh, course, even this uh, uh, pumice at the bottom. And this is the back and the front. So I always, because since this is so small, uh, instead of putting by the side here, I'm actually gonna put it slightly to the middle, okay. And, You have one hand secure this. Okay, you don't want it to be too deep or too too high. Uh, too deep, the water will retain on the pot, on the shoe. Uh, if you're too low, too tall, too high, the root will expose. Again, I'm going to press only upon the two four side, slightly. As long as I take it out, they're not going to fall off. All right. All right, Jeff, let me put a focus on this. And then I will find the label and put it back in here. So once these are pre uh, repotted, these are pre pre moist, then I will put it in the, another designated area and then do, we do not water them. You can put it in a little greenhouse you have or you can put it in the plastic bag for higher humidity. Uh, depend on where you want to do it. Or just or put it, if you have a greenhouse, put it in the, in the bunker area of the greenhouse because don't put it back to the regular area because they actually have some, in, in our, for, that, for us, it's like they've gone through a surgery. So you want to have a nice recovery area, reduce shade and increase humidity. And the, the polymeter is pretty moist. The worst thing you can do is right now is to water them right away okay you want it in the, you want it in this a little bit on the dry side then the, that will give and force the plant to send up a new root system okay here's another example of the down flower and look at this it's not a very stable plant uh, this one here also have a shoot coming up. So I, I'm not gonna touch it, touch it because a little bit over the wood. <clears throat> but this is a lot of, uh, I think the poly media also very, very dry uh, type. You can, what you can do is you can put some, if you, in the very dry period, you can actually put some moss on the top to prevent them from too dry now, for example. All right. Then what about repotting? I'm going to find you a, okay, here's another one, really severe. Okay, this is a Pafipedian Balotulum. Okay, this is, this is a really a mess. All right. This is one of the best one I find for repotting. Okay, this is kind of over shallow. Look at this, this is a 
perfect pattern for a lot of children. This is the warm, one of those uh, bracket pattern type. Okay. Now, and bracket pattern has done the flower, and they're not going to flower until next summer. Ah, look at that. Ooh, trash the media. I'm going to find another tool. With the kip tips. Okay. Did you see all the bad root system? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what happened when you actually uh, too late to repot them. But I should repot them because if I don't do it, uh, if I wait until next spring, all the root will be all gone. So, one way to tell is the root is good or bad. Just feel the root. It's a feel the root is nice, it's a soft, mushy. Okay, you gotta trim them off. Because they're dead anyway. So if you you don't want them to come back into your new media. So any root that you touch is nice and firm, you know it's a solid root. Okay. Oh this is good. Uh, not bad. Now, do not repot them, do not divide them. In this is the case, brachypatium type, brachypatium, thank you. It's a very slow grower. And you had to refrain from wanting to divide them. It's better to have let them, this is a joint twin, and to leave it alone, okay? Do not repair them. Uh, some people, there are some people will actually try to divide them and that will be the, almost a death sentence. You can only maybe say one. Uh, so it's rather to say this one here and look at this here. They have another baby coming up here. So leave them alone here. And <coughs> Bison, again, yeah. You can actually use a bigger box. This infects the fison. Sometimes I leave it there for about one minute, but uh, for today's podcast purpose. And then another. This is Mega Thrive. Okay. So disinfect. This is the alcohol. I will clean up my potting area again. Uh, rubbing alcohol is wonderful. You can actually use it for spraying, clean your leaf. So you actually uh, want to free. Again, this is a little bit too deep because there's not much uh, root there. So I'm going to use a shorter one. You see here the difference? Okay, if I put this in the two uh, deep like this, most of the uh, brachypedium, they have a more shallow root system and they go this way because in their native habitat, they actually go on the top of uh, decomposed uh, leaf and underneath there are some, maybe some of the uh, rock, for example. So always on the brachypedium type, whether it's Bolosherum, uh, local chitin pipe, always go there in the shorter part versus the long and tall part. Okay. Again. In general, we usually put the old one in the back, but because I saw there's a new shoe coming up here from the back, so it's best to put this particular one in the center because you're going to have a new shoe coming up from the left, and this is a uh, this new shoe here, all my material for next spring will be in the center. Okay, and this is very easy. I just use it very clean.
one hand and just tap 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 one thing you don't want to do on the the perfect pen is to force them down okay you, you do a tapping okay let it let the polymedia fall in uh, sometimes I put this on the side let it fall in so I don't want to force the root in the center to become that in all in the center and that's not good the print the root will rot it okay there's not enough air for them then put your four finger on the side here just press some on the side only okay then if you can take it out like this then they are secure okay uh, that way they can ni have nice okay then we're gonna put it all the same area with the one we just repotted again reduce light Water, no water. No water, because they are pre-mixed. They are pre-moist. The key word is pre-moist. Okay. Now, what about this? For example, uh, this is the case I actually would do not mind want to divide it because, again, this is Maria type. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is this is the uh, rubbing alcohol. I love. If I send something like this, people are gonna complain because the uh, it had it do have a, a, a old leaf here. So this is the this is the perfect case to divide them, and you should divide them because uh, oh right here. This is when I need assistance. Where's Brian? <laughs> okay, this is the one thing about the Maldia type. Maldia type is a, a few orchid that I should do not mind to repot even in flower okay voila it's actually very good just shake it okay there's some wheat here in general the wheat the root is is very nice and firm and strong okay there's not maybe a couple more of the the bad water let's get another clean razor play okay and then again this is the old leaf. I'm gonna cut them off. And this is actually front of center. Some of the all you have to do just follow, follow this rise on here. There's one division, another division, and this is one of the original one. Now <coughs> you have three prints. Okay. I'm gonna trim off all this oil leaf. Let me air dry. You see the cut surface here, Jeff? Okay, that's a, that's a, okay. Let it let dry out a little bit. So now that is the area. Norman. We should leave, uh, 95. Okay, two in one cakey paste again. You see, his, I do have to have cut surface. Make sure you seal them off. The cakey paste have, uh, I have also have some alcohol in there. So al alcohol will actually not only seal them but also disinfect. Okay. It's also petroleum, right? So you put petroleum. Yeah, this on is actually uh, seal it up pretty yeah. Well. This is petroleum. So if you put it, if you. Have uh, it's actually not going to wash off. Not like the old uh, rooting powder. It's a mess. It's almost like uh, Neosporin consistency, right? Yes, yes. So you put that over a wound and it's, yeah. it's sealed so, up. So uh, we now, this is why it's so popular. We used to have uh, five grain, but this now you order online is 10 grain now. 10, uh, 10 grain now, double the size. Because you, you can use on everything, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna touch, put it in the base, even though this one does not have a cut surface, but I'm gonna put it on the base of the root here. Um, and also the side here. This is where they're gonna stimulate, okay, stimulate new shoe coming up or new root coming up, okay.
Okay, so this tip here is soft. So I'm gonna trim it off. Voila. Isn't that pretty? Then, again, I'm not gonna put this back into the, this tall one because they do not have a lot of tall root. The first thing you do is uh, five cent because I already sealed them with the petroleum, uh, with the cakey paste, that's okay. Okay, five cent. Just to rinse off the old root area. I do I do have to seal them first. So the, the cut surface had the cakey paste with petroleum, so the seal and the, there's no water going in. Okay, but then, now I'm gonna re Then it's talking mega thread solution. Okay. Okay, mega thread solution. What is the shelf life on the kiki paste? Put it, I, I usually put it, don't put it in the, don't put it in the uh, garage. Okay, put it in the room temperature. And it's good for f about three to five years. And for me, before I sell them, I actually put it in the uh, refrigerator that even keep the temperature even longer, longer, longer okay? Then, this is a uh, mega dry. I'm gonna give it a good spray for the leaf, okay, before I pile them up. Again, I'm gonna use, you kind of gauge it, I'm gonna use a shorter one here. Here's all, going point, so I'm going to put it, slide it to the far left. Just use one, one hand to secure and position again. Tap, tap, tap. Press a couple times. Okay, too low. We're going to feel that more. Okay, so in the plant like this, they actually uh, can go on to flower for the next couple of months. And this is one amazing part about the the papipedium is they actually can be repot at any time of the year. So this is the same division now from the same plant. So what I'm going to do is. I'm gonna put it in even smaller pot. What I call a uh, 2.5 rose pot. And since I have a nice root system here, I'm gonna put it in a taller spot. So you do not want to put it in here, okay? This is why we don't we don't sell print by the pot size. Pot size can be very misleading. Okay, uh, uh, I will put this in this side, but you know what, it's, in my nursery, it's all about what's good for the print. Because the past, some people always say, well, the bigger the better. No, remember always my philosophy, less is more. In this case, they've been separated, you want to start over. So it's better and safer to then install in a smaller part. So they, they're not going to be have, they're not going to be too wet because all this volume of the bark will take longer to dry out, right? And the first thing the root is trying, the plant is trying to do is to fill out the pot with the root instead of trying to put up more foliage. There's one division again, and this is a cut surface. So this is a cut surface. So I mean, now I'm going to put it way in the back here because the new growth will be from here. Put your one hand. Secure the secure the print, and I find it really it's very very nice to do repotting. It's really calm experience for me. And then I'm gonna put these three together, and we are gonna generate. You can handwrite it, a label. Uh, this is the Maori Colorado. Okay. 
So when you set it aside, I know you said you don't water it. How long do you generally wait on a path? Well, right because now you don't want them completely yeah, dry well, out either, depending right? on the season. Right now, they, it could, it's actually been good for about almost 10 to 14 weeks. Okay. Days? Yeah. Yeah. And especially, I'm going to put it in the boy higher humidity. Lower light. When you put it in a low light area, okay, this is why even go under light. Put it in the, the edge of your light stand or away from the fan. So um, if it's dry, in, your, in my greenhouse, it's high humidity already. If you're in the house, you have, if you dry, you can put in the plastic bag, okay? And just open up uh, maybe five, 10 minutes a day. Or you can just mix them. Uh, mix them with either a five cent solution or uh, make a dry. So you don't want to soak the roots. You want to give them time to establish. Yes. And that's why you're waiting 10 to 14 days. Yeah. And because the dry and the dryness, I should encourage and tell the plant, hey, I better put us some new roots coming up. Okay. But if you put it, if you water them right away, they got too comfortable. There's no incentive incentive for them to put a new root system. Okay. Almost like your kid. You keep you keep your spoil your kid. They're not gonna go to you know. They go, they're gonna grow out the root depending on you. Okay, what about this? Oh, woo. This is one of the, this is really overdose, overdose. Uh, the plant did have some problem with crown rot. And this is a, a crown a situation that we did save the plant. Uh, we, did, we did before is when you have a crown rot, okay, what we did before is Right away, I put a concentrated fison in the crown, and it set them aside, and it stopped the rotting. Okay, it did. And we also, I'm gonna repeat what we did before. I'm gonna get the new pointer or Q-tips. I also put it at the base of where the crown is. Okay, remember we also put it there, so they killed it already. So by doing so, instead of maybe 50% or less, you might have a shoot coming out that increased almost 70 to 90%. And I did have a new goal coming up. Okay, so now is the step to do the surgery. This is the front part. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna spray my hand. I always, when you do the repotting, I have this uh, rubbing alcohol. Okay, the most I remember when I go, used to work in the tissue culture laboratory between the flask and each, each bottle flask, we always spray the hand. Ooh, look at this. All right. Is we, we we did purposely let the pot immediately dry out. Okay, so the pre, the root is actually very very straight. And ha, if I did not have the cakey paste on there, this would not even survive. So now we're going to do a topping. We topped it. Remove all this yellow, decade it. Okay, here, Jeff, can we see this? Okay, now the next step is to really trim off. And we talk about trim off almost a lot of stuff. And this is the, the stage that Mega Dry is really gonna help the root. Okay, I'm gonna dump this all one here. And then we're going to get a new Mega Dry solution. Fison. Oh, this is Fison. Okay, this is Fison solution. I'm going to let it stick for a minute, okay? And when we're working on different stuff. Rinse a minute. And I'm going to do it. I'm gonna get some new
make a try too. Okay, this is this in fact. Now I'm gonna let the situation like this. It's so stressed. I'm gonna let it stick in the make a try for this couple of minutes. So at the meantime, I'm gonna show you this complex. Should we repair, divide, or don't touch it? One or three. What do you think? Repair. How many want to want to repair? How many people want to divide? Or how many people want to just repair to a bigger part? Anybody? I think everybody fell asleep. Okay. <laughs> We're going to wake them up. Oh, Linda says yes. What is that, Linda? No, she says divide. Divide? No. Okay. I think she's saying divide. Catherine says divide. Let me see if I can divide them. Yes. Okay. There's two possibilities for this. Yes, to divide. Another possibility is to repart to a bigger part. Uh, if I repart to a bigger part, this eventually is going to die back. Okay, but this particular one is a nice selective plan. So I do want to make sure I have a extra division available. So by doing divide at this stage, and this is okay because they're not going to flower until this coming winter, you still have four months. Okay, so they're growing, uh, but if I don't divide them, this eventually is going to die back like a tree fall off. So by making a division, then my ash is going to have an extra, what we call the backboard division. Okay, all right, good, Linda. So it's actually always case by case. And in this is the case, it's best to just take them out of path so you can really inspect the situation. Uh, look at it, the, they have good, this is, this is very good. You cannot really tell the root until it come out. I have very good root system. You see here? All right. So now, pinch off this old part here. He has three, right? So we're going to cut here. And this is when you have the good, really sharp pointed tool. And I'm going to make an insertion really fast. What up? You see here? So this will be considered as a backboard division, and this is a front division, and they have enough root system here. Uh, it, it's going to support the plant to have a new growth. Uh, this one here actually haven't flowered this uh, this year for some reason. So don't be surprised when we repart this one here. In, uh, I'm actually going to get this this spike right away for the winter, which is their normal season for the complex. And then this new growth here is going to be flowered in about March, April. So this is actually a very, in the case of very good for divide. All right, so this is the backbone. You want to stay as much root, as, as, as long as they are nice and are firm. And it's actually, even some of the older one, too long, you can actually do what we do, the root pruning. That's a lot of root. That's actually this is very, good root, isn't The it? more root, the better, because that actually can help uh, to recover, okay? Why is it? I'm gonna rinse them off. And then, oh, I almost forget, I should do the cakey paste first. So I was use another new tips on the print. I am put it on the, the cut surface. Okay, you see that new root coming up here? I'm gonna get another snap here and put it by the new shoe here at the base. Okay. That actually because the season right now is getting cooler. Uh, they're not gonna put up they already have a new shoot coming up, so they're going to encourage a new shoot grow. So this is going to be flowered at least twice next spring. 
and also the new roof crew coming up. Okay, this is very nice. Okay. This is the ball timing. That actually has a lot of new root coming out, doesn't yes. it? Yes. This is why you do not want to repart or divide. When the pollen media is too deep, too decomposed. I see at least like four, four or five new growths on that. You see the new the root system. New shoot, yeah. Well, this plant, the day before, I always water the, the before you divide any orchid, and especially Papripedium, I water them the day before I water them. I water them, and I actually also spray them with uh, 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 make a dry too. Uh, okay, it won't. It will not help. Uh, <clears throat> now, this is the now. This is the case. You can actually can use this is clean. And I'm going to put that in the mega dry. Perfect. See the the deep root here. Again, all pre-moist, fine mix. I'm going to put this more in the center instead of side because uh, this will flower, this will flower, and I also see a new shoot coming out here. So you do want to put it in, not to the side, but some in the center a little bit. Okay. That way, I still need two good two years of growth for this one here, that's a bit higher. Again, tap, tap, tap. One and two, only from the side, not in the center, okay? And then you take it out, it doesn't drop it, bingo. So that's the front division. The back division have plenty of them. I'm not going to put it into a, a six inch pot. This is too big. Okay. I'm again less is more. I'm going to be put it back to the same size, but a clean one, and put it in the center. Okay. Just because put. those roots like to circle around, right? They don't want to spread out and go forever. They like to be. Yeah. Uh, now this. Yeah. This time I to do that. Tight and wind a little bit. Yeah, they're not that micrantum. Micrantum like to be just wrong everywhere because they do have a rhizome. So this, the complex, is free from pathophenia in Sydney. If I'm Himalaya, and this is a perfect. Now, especially this is a backboard division. The backboard division, it really do not want to water them. Okay, this they let really dry out. Okay. Then you're gonna have make sure you label the plant and write on the date, especially on the back ball. Okay. In the meantime, all your plant has been divided. Okay. Reduce light. And I'm gonna this is the one that we rescue, remember? on the crown rod. Okay. And I'm gonna do this again. I'm going to put a small pot for them. Again, less is more. It's better to have a small pot than then recover. And I'm gonna do another trimming. I have a socket in Mega Dry. Now I can see, inspect again, I need to cut off even more. And it's actually good to spray alcohol from here. Yeah, this is where the this is where the crown rise.
Aha. Okay. So, this is the case that we rescue from the crown rock over the winter. And this is actually a very valuable plant. This is the Rothschild Dairy Hybrid. Okay, this is five cent. I'm gonna put the label back, but I'm gonna clean it up in the five cent, okay? And make sure we put the label there. And then if you have, you know, if you have extra label, but right then the day that you repot. And so now you can count maybe 10 day to 14 day, you can clean the water. And in the meantime, all this been repotted, put in the same area. Uh, you can increase the moisture. Again, reduce the light, increase the moisture by having in a, a saucer with some water about the gravel, or during the day, you can actually mix the leaf with, with water or Fison solution. Fison or make a thrive. All right. All right. So I think this will be complete today's uh, session. So, uh, Here's a, here another case of need to be divide or repot. Uh, here's another case. But they actually run out of pot. Perfect case to, but in this case, I'm not gonna repot it. Okay. All right, so it's always case by case, but always if you have any doubt, any question, uh, instead of PM me, because I have so many people, post it on these, uh, any of your group or our uh, podcast group, uh, instead of me answer just one by one, I only benefit one person. Post it in our group. There are some more experienced group making can help, and I will try to respond. And we all that way we all learn together. Okay. Let's see. Okay. This is the second time that flower. This crone is unbelievable. The flower. We cut the spike from spring. They finish by Mountain Day. Now they flower for winter time again. So if you don't have a lot of the miniature Harlequin, this is a must have. It's bred from my good friend, Lulin Orchid. All right, so this will complete this week. I will stay tuned. Uh, make sure you come back next week. Uh, we're going to talk about to cut or not to cut on the perfume, on the fan analysis Orchid. See you next week. And I do apologize for my voice today. Bye-bye.